2009, I represented my country, Israel. Uh, so, as you understand, I'm a Palestinian citizen of Israel. So I represented Israel in the Eurovision. The Eurovision, Americans don't really know what Eurovision is. But do you? How many people know what Eurovision well, especially is? Especially after ah, we okay. won. Oh, okay, we're think. good, we're good. Yeah. So Eurovision, yeah, it's a big contest. Europe, I don't know how Israel is part of Europe, but hey, we are. Yeah, it's a, we, we, we have that talent of being part of Europe somehow. Uh, so it's a, big, it's a big deal, and I represented Israel together with Achinoam Nini, Noah, an Israeli Jewish sing singer of Yemenite roots. Um, and it coincided with the cast led the operation on Gaza, the IDF operation on Gaza. And, and so, needless to say, it was a very complex time for me as a Palestinian to represent Israel uh, internationally with uh, something that has a, a large media exposure uh, and have to answer very, very tough questions as where I stand uh, regarding everything that's going on. And I really had a big dilemma deciding whether I'm going through with it or not. Uh, a lot of pressure was put on me. There was a petition uh, against me signed by some of my best friends at that time, people that I considered to be on my side, you know, my camp, uh, thinking that it, a, I, they claimed that I'm like the fig leaf covering. Yeah, I'm, I'm like a tool in the hands of the, you know, propaganda machine, the Israeli propaganda machine. So. I did go to Moscow to participate in the Eurovision. That was my decision eventually. I had convinced my family to, you know, <laughs> to, to hold it in, to with you. bear with me. And I convinced them that long term it's going to be the better thing to do because I have a message to convey to the world. And if I step down, nobody's going to see me. If I go, people are going to give me microphones and I'm going to tell the story. And that's what I did. But when I came back from Moscow, I had. I knew that no one, no one knew exactly what I had to go through that time because uh, on the outside, you know, in the media, I had to keep this facade of something because that's what we do, artists. You know, we have our real thing going on and then we have to keep this facade of stuff that is, that is fine, we're selling the story, you know, you're a vision, well, excited, yay, woo. Everything's perfect. Everything's perfect, we'll let go, we're choosing dresses and whatever. And nobody really know, uh, knew the behind the scene uh, complexity, how it affected me and my family, my relationship with my family, how it affected my relationship with my partner at that time. So uh, this whole thing. So uh, this is not one-on-one, -on -one. this is not me. I'm not Mona, Mona is not me. Uh, but as you can see, the, the storyline is a little bit, you know, inspired by that complexity of being, especially being a woman coming from a patriarchal, patriarchal society, an Arab village, who still, I had still not completed a circle in my relationship with my father. I'm glad to say that today I have. So we're good friends, yes. You can clap. Again, that's up. not my father. <laughs> Again, the, 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 that, I, that character is not how my father really acts, but he is a, some a sort of my father. <laughs> Does this represent what things are, how um, society is in the village today? Yes, I mean... We have changed, okay? So when I started out, <laughs> which was a long time ago, it was much more difficult for a girl um, to start on her own um, individual route. Uh, I was a bit, re a bit rebellion, as you can expect. Uh, I had a rock band, uh, yeah. I uh, lived in Haifa and I wanted to make music and, uh, and I shaved my head and I was playing electric guitar, and it didn't what re didn't really it wasn't go exactly well with what they had <laughs> exactly. in mind. Exactly. So there was always like this talk about this the weird daughter of Doctor Anwar, you know, <laughs> um, and and then of course it was my family who got the pressure because I had already lived outside the village, and then every time when when I came to visit in the weekends, uh, you know, I would see that they had to answer to people about things. I'm doing, and the more famous I became, the, the more uh, of a of a you know of a public figure. Then of course things became larger because it would be in the newspaper. It wouldn't be just gossip. So everything kind of touched on them as well. Did you feel backlash and criticism from everyone, like we see here, from all the different communities, both your own, both the Jewish? Well, what did you experience? for the Jewish? I was too Arab. <laughs> for the Arabs, I was too Jewish. <laughs> 
I was always, uh, you know, I was always uh, um, accused of being too Israeli. I don't know what that means, but that's the like, you, you're too Israeli. It's like, and I'm too modern, I'm too liberal, I'm too outspoken, because uh, we still expect women. I don't think it's only in the Arabic society, it's in a lot of other societies as well, but I would say in, in more per, uh, conservative societies, we still expect women to be quiet and not so outspoken, and of course, 25 years ago. Uh, we have changed. The Arab society in Israel has changed a lot in these 25 years. So, so girls today don't have to face the same problems, but they do have to... Muna is not so far from the reality. Some girls even have it harder because it depends on the family, how much the family is conservative, religious, you, you choose it. Uh, some, we, don't have, we don't have to be religious in order to be conservative. That's the thing. So uh, it, it comes with this traditional kind of way of living, and it's more conservative. You're showing Tel Aviv. We all know Tel Aviv as this liberal bubble where everyone can be themselves and everyone accepts the other end. Yeah. You're showing that that is not exactly <laughs> the way things are. Yeah. It's kind of like we're liberal until you're an Arab. Or something a, or else, or Ethiopian. Or, something or, else, or, yeah, or showing yeah. a Palestinian flag. <laughs> what would you like to show in that regard? So th this is, ag again, something that I really wanted to, to talk. I have been talking about it for years. The fact that, yeah, when I... For example, for me also, when I left the village and started my life in the wider Israeli society, right? So I moved first to Haifa and then to Tel Aviv thinking, hey, big city, you know, nobody's gonna discriminate against me for, for my gender, right? And I was right. As a woman, I was free to do and come and go as I want and dress the way I want and laugh as loud as I want. Uh, but then I discovered that I'm the Arab. So then being discriminated against for something else, for the political, uh, for the political identity. So yeah, Tel Aviv is, is this bubble, we call it the bubble, and we love it because it's some kind of a bubble, because it's like outside of Israel. It's, it's like uh, this own, it, it has its own atmosphere outside of the country. It is amazing. <laughs> almost, yeah, 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 it's a virtual reality almost. But then again, yeah, we still do have a lot of, issues to solve <laughs> there's still a way to <laughs> there go there is today. a way to go <laughs> i'm interested and we'll soon open it up to you guys so you can also ask questions but you choose not only to show the complexity the murkavut of your own identity I didn't, by the way i didn't know if people here understood that 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 bit because it was translated it's a great bit he told her uh he was talking about the complexity now they're speaking in arabic but when he says complexity he says it in hebrew he can't remember the word in Arabic. So because uh, Arabs in Israel, of course, naturally, it's a natural thing. We mix a lot of Hebrew in the Arabic. It's because Hebraic. It, it's Hebraic. It's like the Israelis mix a lot of Arabic without even knowing it's Arabic. 100%. Without even knowing. Uh, so we do the same. And, uh, and Rani especially. Rani is this city boy. He, he has no English, uh, Arabic, We don't Hebrew, really know if he's mess. been ever in a village, you know. It's like he's city boy, escapist guy. And he says about complexity and he's saying it only in Hebrew and suddenly she's, she, rema she goes like, oh my God, you don't know how to say complexity in Arabic. And that's, like, <laughs> and that's actually, that's a real thing. I have a friend who's like that. So it's like a, <laughs> a real scene from life. <laughs> <laughs> they go like clicked. Oh my God! You don't know how to say the word. Then you're like, no. But I it's can't amazing. It's this new language, and it's a mesh. For me, it's Hebrew and English like that. For you, I'm guessing it's Hebrew, Arabic, English. It all kind of mixes up. And so, if you don't speak Hebrew, then then yeah, you would get a different experience also from from Muna itself. Um, but but let's get back to the question. You chose to also show, uh, or maybe another question, domestic violence. Why did you choose? to bring that to the forefront as well and not just stay more on the identity level? Because we have it, a lot of it. And not only in the Arab society, but I care about the Arab society. We still have a lot of it, too much of it. Violence against women, I was still dealing with that and, uh, and I wanted that in. I wanted to talk about that. And again, it's not only the Arab society. Women are beaten, raped, harassed every day, all the time. And, um, and I wanted that story. I wanted it out in the open because, uh, because we are a traditional society, we don't talk about these things so much. And we do shush it up, you know? We, do, we, we, 
we find ways to kind of cover it up and make peace in the house. And Leia, like, she, com- she goes back to her husband and they keep fighting, but you know, quietly. And she would run away to her parents. They would bring her back to her husband because this is the way it is. And they want to keep it quiet. They don't want to talk about it. Women feel ashamed to complain about violence in the house because you don't talk about these things. And I want it to change already. And here society's taking part in it. They're protecting it. They're protecting Because him society, in a way. that's what they do. They, be, they don't want to be ashamed. They don't want the shame to follow their family. So they keep it quiet. So yeah, in a way, they are helping the perpetrator. All right. And I want them to see that they are helping the perpetrator. And the, the more we see, and we more, the more we advance in the series, we see how, how, it's, how complex it is. Even for the woman, not really decisively knowing that it's wrong. She also participates in covering it up, in a way. It's so deep, deeply rooted in us to cover up for the, for the violence, for, the, for this kind of treatment of women, that the woman it herself sometimes kind of justifies it, finds reasons why she's to blame, or something else is to blame, or the weather. I don't know. <laughs> what, what kind of reactions are you getting from the different communities that you know from your own family? I have to say that when we released, um, first of all, I chose to watch the first episode with my family. So I went to my village, which is like three hours drive from Tel Aviv. I made a point of watching the first episode with my father and mother. To see also, I wanted to spy on their <laughs> reactions because it was the first time that they saw what I was working on for 10 years now, right? I, yeah, I worked on this for 10 years. Which, by the way, who would have thought it would be so relevant today because it's like a flashback. It doesn't like really change, th- does it? No. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the seasons. <laughs> we have the cycle. Uh, the cycle of violence, yeah. So, um, where was I? How, how did the parents react? Right. We're looking at their I was looking at them like for, like from the in my peripheral vision. <laughs> Like I wanted to see, and you know, so it, it, so my father was really like relaxed and everything. And when uh, Mona go reaches the house and mother is uh, singing and she's working in the garden, my dad goes, "Oh, here's Mira's mother," <laughs> and I'm like, "No, dad, Mona, Mona's mother." <laughs> It was like that. That was a golden moment where my dad lost the. It was like, oh, here's Mira's mother. No, dad, she doesn't look like mom. No, 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 no. It's Muna's mother. So yeah, you so wanted to make sure he didn't also fine. see himself as the dad. He liked. He liked the actor. He liked. Okay, so that's a good thing. He likes the actor who's doing the dad. And at the end, at the end, we all have compassion for the dad. And there, there's a, a wonderful uh, closing scene where where they kind of. Um, uh, reconciliate, how do you say? Reconciliation. Yeah, or the, the reconciliation scene of Mona and her dad is beautiful, so eventually it's fine. Yes. <laughs> so keep watching. So he's not only the, yeah. g- the bad guy. <laughs> All right, I'd love to ask more, but I will open it up to questions, so. Hello, I love the show. It was really um, resonant and powerful. Thank Thanks. My question is about the music choices. I love the music, and I feel like the music really dictated the kind of atmosphere, the pristine of, of the beliefs, the politics, and the energy. And I was wondering how you, um, you just chose the music and how you understood like the, the value of sound and music in defining the, um, the scenery. First of all, we chose the musician, uh, a, a brilliant musician to make this, the music, which is Dudu Tassa. He's an Israeli uh, musician, but of uh, Iraqi and Yemenite uh, Origins, so he actually makes also Arabic music. So, so he kind of understands both worlds like I do, and that's why I was very confident. But I didn't want to bring, I wanted somebody with an edge because I didn't want it to be like this ambiance, Eastern music, oud improvisations. I wanted it to have an edge. I wanted it to have, uh, I don't know. <laughs> You know, in it. <laughs> How do you say? <laughs> That's in all Cratch. languages. I wanted it to scratch you, not only be like this ambiance to tell you that we're Arabs. 
And this is very Dudu Tassa. This is very Dudu Tassa. I saw the name before I first I heard the music, then I saw his name. I said, ah, that is no, very No, he's the perfect, him. Perf perfect choice. Yeah. <laughs> and when you do the good choice for somebody to do a job, then you can, be, you know, can trust him to do the job. And that's it. <laughs> All right. Right here, second row. I think, first of all, uh, to commend you for really an amazing, an amazing uh, production, very moving, very strong. Thank you. Hey. So uh, I would like I'll to I'll pass it on to the rest of the creators because there are a lot of people yeah. who are partners in this. I'm not the only one who did yeah, this, but right? It's, the it's, it's so powerful, and I'm so glad, and I'm an Israeli, I'm so glad that uh, Channel 11 yeah. is hearing. So I think that also indicates that there is a change and maybe not the pace that we would like to see, but there is a change. And, and I would like to hear from you, um, do you see uh, already a difference? We talked about change in, on both camps. You live in Tel Aviv. I see, for example, intermarriages among Israeli slabs. That is, whoa, yeah, but I think it's very interesting. If you can also, whether it's isolated um, cases or it's indicates some kind of a trend and what's happening in the villages? Um, so, as always, things are complex. So you have always two trends going, two opposite trends. <laughs> and I think the opposite trends rely on each other. So, of course, we're becoming, becoming more liberal and things like mixed marriage, I'm, I'm in a mixed marriage as well, and things like that, maybe are more normal today than 20 years ago when it was like, what? People did not know how to handle these things and people were afraid for the kids. Like, wh how, which kindergarten are we gonna put them in and how are they gonna be treated if they're half Arab, half Jewish? And today is more normal. I wouldn't say it's normal because we still have a lot of pushback to these things. A lot of people coming from extremes saying that this is un unacceptable, this, you know, merging. Uh, whatever. Once I got, I'm gonna like, once I got this question from a journalist because my, my husband is Jewish and she was like, okay, so because you're in a mixed marriage, and I was like, mixed marriage? What do you mean? I did not marry a giraffe. <laughs> Why is it a mixed marriage? He's a human being. He's a homo sapiens. I mean, still man. But, <laughs> like, he's a man. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's already a, <laughs> no, a another species. But I, I just like I didn't I didn't understand. Like, what do you mean? What's mixed about it? I didn't get it. And then I understood what she's saying. So we <laughs> we are like we are moving ahead, but actually moving ahead, becoming more liberal, is really stressing out the conservatives. <laughs> So the pushback is stronger, and, but that's normal. So I take it as a sign that we're making progress because if they're so mad and angry about this liberalism, it means that we've gone a, a, you know, a far ahead. You know? You're doing something right. That's that, we're, that, we that we apparently are doing something. We're more liberal, more out there, and that's why they're getting angry. All right, third row. I've got to salute you. I think you did an absolutely fabulous job. Thank uh, you. Uh, and uh, e you know, soon the question has to be: so, you know, so why is this Israeli? Because you know, the conflict between liberal and conservative is universal and could take place I think so. uh, anywhere. So, for me, this is you know, again, you know, quite universal. And it was wonderful that we could relate to each character, and they seemed so real and very accessible. You, you really did a beautiful job. Uh, my question is uh, how you made the choice to make it on the serious side rather than on the comedic side, as Kashua would have done. And did Kashua, by doing this in a comedic way, uh, prepare the way for you to do this in a serious way? Thank you. Uh, listen, for sure, if there hadn't been Arab labor, this is the TV series by Sayyid Khashur. We had four seasons of that. I, was act I acted on that. I, I had a wonderful character called Amal. And if, if we didn't have Arab labor, I would probably would not have, I have to be honest, I would probably would not have been able to sell this to Israeli TV. 
So it did pave the way <laughs> in, a, in a sad, ironic way, it did. Because I, I knew that now maybe, I, I was hopeful that now maybe the Israeli crowd would be ready for a drama and about a woman, which is more layers. Um, because, the, you know, it could have, like, uh, kind of graduated from Arab labor into, well, he did, he had, uh, Said Khashur did another TV series called the, the Script Writer. Is it Script Writer? Yeah. Screen, screen writer. Um, so, he, so, so the, yeah, there was a transition. We, we had to start with the jokes. Jokes, 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 punch. <laughs> jokes, 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 punch. Joke, punch, joke, punch, 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 punch. <laughs> I mean, now we know your thought. Process. You have to. It's like you have to. You have to somehow because you want people to listen. And if you and, and, and I mean, I would have wanted us to be able to do things all the time to 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 open windows, more windows to be because because we don't have enough content of this kind on TV. We don't. I mean, and, and that's, uh, the Arab community is always stressed out when anything like this comes out to the screen because, because um, they want everything to be represented, right? They want a fuller picture of who they are. They want a fuller picture of the Arab community within Israel. But one story cannot bring the full picture. And I try to convey that to, the, to our audience. I cannot bring the whole story of the Arab community in Israel in Muna. It cannot happen. This is the story of Muna, which is a very specific slice of the community. And when we do the next thing, it's going to be a different little, you know, detail. And then more and more and more. And, and I want to push for more content like this. Uh, not like this, but, you know, of this kind where we're opening more and more windows into the reality of the Arab community in Israel. And I hope we succeed. I think everyone in the room wants more content like this. <laughs> Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm, um, I'm thinking about the Philip character. Mm -hmm. And um, he, I, I had trouble during the looking at him at the scene and not to think about Herzl. Like, he is Herzl. <laughs> so strong. And his name, his name is Philip. Philip yeah. And not Israeli, not <laughs> Arabic. Uh, and he, at, uh, in the last chapter that um, the discussion he had with Rani, he even said that the settlers have a point. Uh, so I'm very interested in that character. And if you could please expand a little bit about him. Thank you. You know, that scene is one of my favorites. And I insisted, like I fought for it to stay word by word. It's one of it's one of the like the scenes that I wrote, and I like I was like this has to stay. This is important, and <laughs> and I will tell you why. First of all, Philip is totally based on a real person, and the real I'm not gonna say the name of the real person, but the real person also did not. He had also like this uh, international French name. Um, he's like this intellectual, Palestinian proud, Palestinian, um, very left-wing, some would say extreme left-wing um, person who believes that we have to make a stand, you know, for, for, for our own people. And now this discussion um, exists, within, exists within the Arab community. So Rani represents the people who just want to live, who just want to have an everyday life. Just leave me alone with all the politics. I don't want to represent anyone. I don't want to be a flag. I just want to have a life. I want to wake up in the morning, ha go to work, then go party. <laughs> He's leave so me quintessential Tel Aviv. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, my brother's in Gaza. Fuck you, my brother. You know, it's like he's, he doesn't want to live the slogan. He feels that's a slogan. I want to live real life. And he looks for real emotion. And Philip comes to represent this very, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. It's just this ongoing situation where you also feel very obligated towards your Palestinian brothers. 
and we call them our Palestinian brothers and sisters in Gaza and Ramallah, and, and we, are, we are a bit responsible for them as well because we are more well off in, 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 inside of Israel, and we want to help them get their own freedom and their own choices because they don't have choices. I have a choice. I can come here, I go to New York, I have a passport. In Gaza, they don't have passports. They cannot go anywhere. It's, it's a jail. These people have no horizons, nothing to aspire for. And, and so, yeah, we do feel that relationship. On the other hand, I want to live my own life. Like, I cannot hold this on my shoulders all day. So this, this encounter between these two men, <laughs> between Herzl and... <laughs> <laughs> this is your own <laughs> conversation. Exactly. <laughs> so it, it, it exists, and it exists exactly like that, word for word. Isaac. I want to thank you both, first of all, so much. Thank I have to you. Say, I have to say about the show, I have to say one of the things I love about the show is that um, you know, we're not seeing those stock types that we usually see of uh, Palestinians and Israeli. We're seeing real people, odd, out there, but real people. And, and I think that makes it um, so, so relatable to absolutely everyone and every audience. And I hope we could uh, bring more episodes and uh, bring more so our too. audience Netflix. here. Netflix. Netflix. Yes. Where are they? Where are Netflix? <laughs>